I wish to thank the grace of heaven and the uh, virtue of our predecessors and the compassion, uh, compassion of our transmitters that I have today this opportunity to present the class um, that is a continuation of what uh, lecture Tai had talked about. It's the um, what we call the answers to the truth. Okay, again, um, I don't know how much background we have for new people at least. Um, this uh, was done back in 1936 or 37, okay, where the holy teacher um, had composed uh, a, a, I guess you could call it a sutra, but it's more like a uh, answers and questions session okay now he would pose the question and he would answer it himself so to speak <laughs> okay and so therefore the idea of this um, composition if you will <clears throat> is to try to uh, give us a little bit deeper background in the Tao as well as trying to um, uh, answer some of the questions that we would normally uh, we would probably ask okay not every question of course but most of the questions, let's put it that way, okay, that one would probably ask about the Tao, okay. So this part that we're doing right now is part three, which is the questions. Um, prior to that, I think um, for those who've been uh, in, uh, in this English class for a long time, there's what they call the theories, and then there's the heritage, I believe. Have, has that been done before? Or have you, did yeah, it's all, yeah, you've all done it, right. So, and this part is part three, the questions. And so, I would essentially continue on where it was left off, okay. Well, actually, this is the beginning of the questions. Okay, now, this, this book, this particular book, uh, happens to have both, it's bilingual, okay, so it has both Chinese and English. Um, the book that Carrie's holding up is English. Okay, uh, it's, it's basically just the English part of this book. That's all it is. Okay, it's just missing the Chinese. That's all. Um, and now, uh, I've read through, well, I haven't read through all of it, I admit, but uh, for, the, for the presentation I'm doing, I have read through some of the questions that I'm going to present. And having read the English aspect of it, and then what I did is um, compared it to the Chinese. Okay, now my Chinese is not that fluent, but ideas that I can at least go over it and get an idea of what it's talking about. Uh, the reason why I end up doing it that is at that is because of the fact that another Tao Kin had brought up the question or the, I guess you call it the issue, that uh, it seems like there seems to be some, um, uh, uh, um, I guess you could say, um, incorrections or, <laughs> or, or, or things that are not correct, okay, in the translation. So she had then also tried to compare it to the uh, Chinese, and apparently the Chinese is also sometimes incorrect as well. So in other words, it, it's likely a typo. It's just a number difference between 7 and 9. <laughs> okay, so it could be just a type, simple typo. So because of that, I decided to really look at the English and then com and get it look at the Chinese as well, to try to get an idea to see how well it matches. I guess you want to say that? Okay. And so when I did read English, okay, um, yeah, it, 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 there is differences. <laughs> okay. Now, it's probably because it's possible that the, uh, the editors of these book, uh, this book, they had mentioned it also at the beginning in their foreword saying that, okay, you know, there may be some incorrections in your translation, etc. So, okay, so taking that into account, okay, um, yeah, it seems like there are some um, errors in this, okay, because I just don't want people who do have that book or this one, okay, um, when they read it to sort of like take the English aspect for like, for gospel, for fact, okay, when there are differences okay so that's why originally I had thought that we had sufficient amount of books of that type of book that kind of uh, the English version of this book and everybody just read it I mean I'll read it but everybody can look at the book and then we'll sort of like discuss it in terms of where you know we need to really get into detail or where that there is some I guess you could say uh, misunderstanding of the translation or mistranslation. Okay, what I what I thought it was mistranslation. Okay, so um, 
Yeah, because I I didn't put the English on the text on the screen only because I thought we had enough books now, but I found that we don't have enough books. So actually, um, so Carrie, would you be willing to, since you're the only one who has a book, <laughs> to to uh, read read it? <laughs> read okay. Um, now it's it's part thirty seven. The questions, right? Um, yeah. It's, yeah, let me show you. Part 33. Yeah, right. Okay, we'll, we'll start with that one. It's 37, number 37, if you want to call it. And uh, can you read that for us? Okay, just read. Once you, once you hit the first paragraph, uh, done with the first paragraph, pause, and then we'll talk about a little bit about it and then go on. Okay, now, on the screen, I have basically just the questions. Okay, uh, so this is the first one right here. Okay, and then that's the question that's being posed. And then there's some, there are some uh, just a, a couple of bullet points to try to bring out some main ideas. But uh, these main ideas does not really cover the entirety of what is asked. So that's that's why I really wanted to go through the text as opposed to just go through these main points because there are some areas that uh, one may need to understand. Also, some like I said, mistranslation or whatever. So, Kerry, would you please? Uh, do I need to read the questions? Uh, if you want, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you go. Why should one with a icon still receive tinted out? For those who are good yuanzi, they should be eager to receive tinted out and practice their tinted out in order to get good grades. Yeah. Uh, so, what is the difference between the tinted out and the good yuanzi? Yeah. 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 Y
what, but it doesn't happen. So what are you telling me? You know, definitely the Buddha is not lying. Okay, the Buddha, Buddha basically qualifies that by the, the, the very first sentence: "For those who are good yuanzi." Yuanzi is basically talking about our Buddha nature within all of us, every one of us. We have this Buddha nature, okay? Because we come from somewhere, and ideally we should return back, okay? But he calls it by the word good. It just means the fact that these are the people who have a real good affinity or good relationship to what is spiritual in terms of the Buddhas, okay? The, 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 what the Buddhas have to teach and what they have the, to offer. And so that's what is meant by the good. So for those people who have this good affinity, they have in their mind, okay, this interest that will happen or that will express itself when they encounter something like what the all Buddhists have to offer or when they encounter someone who talks about this Tian Tao or whatever. And so it is, for the, it is, that's why, you know, when you read this at first and you know the fact that, hey, what it's saying doesn't, on the surface, doesn't seem to happen, but actually the uh, Jigong Buddha already said that, yes, it is only, he's talking about the good Yuanzi. Okay, so we don't want to misinterpret the fact that, hey, you know, what he's saying does not seem to be true because it is. Okay, so, now we can continue. So that's the first part. Okay, continue. You may continue, please. Yeah. Second paragraph, yes. Most, most significantly, those who receive Kendall can transcend the cycle of birth, death, and rebirth, return to God's kingdom. Thus, one is forever exempt from suffering brought about by the cycle of birth, death, rebirth, and judgments rendered by the judge of the underworld. If one has a kind heart, but has not received Ken Dao, one remains merely as a good person in a simple world. The only reward to such person is to have a good life after he is reborn. However, the reward in the form of a good life will run out someday. Upon the termination of the reward, good person still face uh, uncertain ending. For those who receive Tian Dao from the enlightened teacher with the Tian Mind, Ming, Ming, Tian Ming, Tian Ming, <laughs> they transcend the cycle of birth, death, rebirth, and enjoy eternal reward. The latter is far superior to the former. Okay, so. Those first two paragraphs essentially cover what the two bullet points that you see. Truly good people want to end the suffering of sentient beings and transcend cycle of life. Okay, the first paragraph talks about the first one. Okay, it just means that yes, for those who have affinity with the Buddhists and all that, they will be really interested in what you have to say about the Tao and what the Buddhists have to say. And so therefore, then you would be very willing to Yes, receive this ten Tao, and also to cultivate yourself, to help the Buddhas to do what they have been sent down to this world to do, and that is to be able to end the suffering of sentient beings. Okay, the second part that Kerry just had uh, read it talks about the fact that there is a reason why, even if for those people who do not have necessarily a good affinity to the Buddhas, but they would still be interested in it. It's the fact that, yes, we do have the ability to, what the Buddhists call, say, transcend the cycle of life and death, okay? Instead of just uh, uh, keep, well, then re uh, instead of just reaping karmic rewards, because here it basically talks about the fact that the, the difference between just being good, just being a great person, a mo even a model in society, versus a person who has this Ten Tao blessing, if you will, okay, or we say Chu Tao, have already Chu Tao, okay, and because without this, well, because when you get into the concept of the Tao, okay, we talk about many different things besides this existence, we have existence of the what we call temporal heaven, <laughs> absolute heaven, hell, etc. Okay, so the idea is that for those who have not received this receive this uh, blessing or receive the Tao, then yes, you end up still going through the cycle of life and death in the sense that you reap your karmic rewards. Uh, if you've been a good person, a model of society, a great person, but have not received the blessing or the received the Tao, then yes, we in, uh, in the 
in the uh, I guess you could say the 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 explanation of the Tian Tao is the fact that you will eventually, of course, we all pass away in this world, but we, you will also reincarnate in what is called the temporal heaven world, if you want to call it that. Okay, and therefore, why is it you, you will end up going there? It's because of the fact that you have all these deeds, that good deeds that you've done. Okay, so therefore, you will reap those karmic rewards. Okay, but as the paragraph mentioned that it itself has a time limit because after all what you do in terms of, of uh, creating good karma or uh, good deeds etc it's like it's, some, it's something that you created yes that's true it's, and also it's something that what um, can be used up if you will okay because it's very much just saying you know you put a lot of money in the bank eventually you know you keep putting the money in back, depositing money back, and then one day you can use it, right? Now, it would be nice if we could deposit, I mean, you know, after we deposit the money, we could take out as much as we want. In, in fact, more than what you've deposited in a bank. That would be great. But the banks don't do that. They only give you what, what, what you have deposited. So therefore, what you have put, done in, your, in, in terms of deeds and all that stuff, your karmic reward, which is the reward that will come later, Basically, it matches what you put in, maybe plus interest or whatever, okay? So, um, these two paragraphs essentially talk about the fact that even if you are a good person, yes, you would still be better off if you can try to, what? Receive this blessing or this ten tao, okay? Now, the third paragraph, in a way, uh, sort of like concludes that. So, Kerry? Oh. I'm sorry, I just want to make sure when you mentioned about Yuan right? Yeah. Yuan yeah, yeah, it's Yuan Fuzi. It means Yuan Fuzi. Right. Yeah, it's sort of like a abbreviation for Yuan Fuzi. Okay, Yuan means what? Source. Fu means Buddha. And Zi is like self. <laughs> okay, person. So it, it talks about the fact that all of us have this physical nature. That's true. We have a brain, etc., a consciousness, etc. But we also have this Buddha nature within us. Okay. So yes, Yuan Zi means Yuan Fu Zi. Yes. It actually shares some of the nature as the, the source as our mother, heavenly mother. Yeah. Well, yeah, actually, yeah. The reason why it's called Fu Zi, uh, if, since we're on that topic, the same Fu Zi, I mean, the, we have the same nature as the Buddha. Buddha himself, when he was teaching when he was still alive the Buddha himself says you and I are exactly the same okay not in terms of of course not physically he and his other his disciples are different but he, they have the same nature and so therefore and because he truly understand what is we call the even though the in terms of uh, is, we say virtue but he un truly understands what because as uh, six patriarch explains what the what is the yeah, right. The, 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 the what? The concept, whether you want to call it concept or whatever, the true equanimity between him and everyone else, or literally every sentient being, actually, from his standpoint, he's ex they're all exactly, the only, if you will, the only aspect that differentiates us is the aspect of the fact that he is awakened or he un truly realizes the equanimity that we all have versus us who we see ourselves as what? Me, differentiation. You four and I are different. Four marks. Yeah. Yeah. It's what we call the four marks. But anyway, the important is, thing is the fact that we do have a what we consider like an ego, <laughs> an id, etc., like in you know, Freudian psychology. But the point is this the fact that he doesn't see it that way because he truly has reached a level of what we call enlightenment. <laughs> so that is why he can see the true equanimity that is among us. Okay. So as Yuanzi, we all, technically, we are all that. Okay. We all have the same nature that the Buddha has. It's just the fact that it's hard for us to sort of like grasp it because we still see ourselves as I. I, you know, me, okay, 
we don't see you know that's why that's why in the Tao community you hear all the time why did that a lot of lecturers say oh or even transmitter tells us oh we should when we use terms like that we should always say we 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 <laughs> right <laughs> you hear that all the time right oh we are whatever even though we're talking about yeah I'm talking about ourselves we I would still say we okay because they're just trying us trying to get us used to the fact that hey we're all the same we're all the same spiritually okay so uh, in this part here I like to uh, just point out a few well there are some um, yeah time's gonna be a, a problem so therefore I won't go into too detail but uh, in the future I would like to go into more detail about this okay so anyway transcending the cycle of life and is the most important thing because it truly allows us to not have to if you will endure the, the idea of birth age sickness and death okay all right now um, it is said of course that you know we've you receive the blessing or the ten Tao okay you receive that you receive the Tao so you do not have to go through this cycle right um, okay maybe if, uh, okay no let's just leave it at that okay because maybe for another time I'll, I'll really delve into truly what is cycle of life and death okay all right so uh carrie would you continue on please if one ponder over these two sayings, the distinction between just being a good person and receiving ten thousand becomes obvious. Okay, well, it may not, it may be obvious, yes, to some people, but not always necessary. Okay, uh, Confucius has said two things, okay. He basically states one, and I quote, a fence sitter is a thief of virtue. Well, that comes from the fact that it's, uh, in Chinese, it's written as de, which is virtue, right? Gong de, 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 virtue. Zi, uh, zi. Uh, zi. <laughs> thief. Okay. Yeah, right. It's yeah, it's um it's it's uh here. Oh, oops. oh uh, yeah, you can. But it's uh, it's on here. It's on here. It's on on my here. I'll point it out in a second right here. That's it. Right Okay. Yeah, for those, you know, who see and that's all he said. Now I think, you know, I haven't found this uh, in the Confucian text yet because you have to read through a lot just to find this phrase. And uh, I think um, he, he interprets it as a fence sitter is a thief of virtue. Now, from these three words, it's kind of hard to say, you know, what is a fence sitter? <laughs> Why are fence sitters on there? Because he's talking, about, but I think I have to look at the context of what Confucius is talking about before I really interpret this. Okay, but those are the three words in Chinese. And he's, in, he's translating as a fence sitter. Basically, in a way, it's possible that in the context of what he's talking about, because he may have said other things as well, that he's talking about the fact that you know, one should not be undecided about, uh, you know, which or what is virtuous and what is not virtuous, because a fence sitter is how, how we interpret it as what someone who is what undecided, right? Yeah, yeah. You're sitting on the fence. You don't. You're not going one or the other. That's that's the interpretation. Yeah, well, well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. No, but that's why you use the word fence setter. But again, I'm uh, I'm sorry that I don't have the true uh, explanation of why is that. But um, so once I figure out or find the text in the Confucian books, uh, maybe I can have a better explanation. Okay, but the second part he talks about is the fact that he goes, what if one who Wait, awake to the to Tao in the morning will not have any regret even if he dies in the same night. So basically he's saying that yes, Confucius this time is a little bit more explanatory in the sense that he says, yeah, if you have already received this blessing or this Tao in the morning, okay, there, sh there is really no need to regret if you happen to die the same day. <laughs> okay, only because of the fact that uh, basically he's trying to point out how precious this blessing is how precious it is okay because it, it's true that for us it is very hard to understand it necessarily but it, he himself being a sage let's put it that way his 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 words and morality if you will have what stayed with us for what 2500 years right 
because he was born around 550 something BC. Okay, so therefore, you know, it just means that why is it that you still talk about Confucius? Yeah, because he really has something to say about life that's really true. Okay, so that's why we still continue on uh, his learning, uh, his teachings. Okay, so so the first chapter here is why will one still have a kind heart and still receive the Tian Dao? Okay, in a way, it's uh, generally explained by this paragraph that, or by this text, a composition that Holy Teacher had composed to try to help us get a better understanding of why is it that even though we ourselves may not have, uh, as Tian Dao, have received this Tian Dao, whether, regardless of whether we're good examples of society or not, okay, it depends on our own, cultiv depending on our own cultivation, of course, we should still try to do our best in trying to propagate the Tao because of the importance of this Tao. Okay? And that's why you have family members or you even have friends who sometimes will talk to you about it, even though you may not have never heard of it before or have never been interested in it before. Okay, the idea is that these uh, uh, these people, whether your family or friends who have received the Tao, find this very precious, and so therefore they would like to share it with those who have not. Okay, so uh, any questions about the first what well, well, we've just gone over? Okay, no. Okay, yeah, like I said. Um, if you get a chance, yeah, I don't know why we we have so few books. Uh, lecture time, or do we? Are we? Oh yes, yes, Andrew. Sorry to interrupt you. Sure. Question, sure. Go ahead. Uh, it's about the idea of uh, escaping the cycle of, of cycle yeah, cycle of life death. And so the one thing I read on the website was the idea of uh, sleep sugar, where we do things without the expectation of reward. Right. Yeah. Uh, and so we do virtuous things for the sake of being virtuous. Right. As right. To, you know, to get something back. Correct. So or expectation of a reward. Yeah. yeah so right. then isn't this idea of escaping life and death kind of or living in the temporal paradise or heaven right. a sense of a reward? And yeah. Reward? Very good question. Very good question. Yeah. <laughs> Think about it. Okay. Okay. A Andrew asked the question of the fact that, yeah, the idea of being very good, etc., um, has a concept of what it's called, in Chinese we call it Wu Wei, without purpose, you know, without purpose, without intention. So therefore, when we do things, sh we should do it not because we have an expectation of a reward, but because we do it because it's right. You know, sometimes you see movies and they say, oh, I do it because it's right, the <laughs> right thing to do, right? Okay, so in the sense that this transcending, okay, let's sort of like take a step back and look at Freudian psychology, <laughs> okay. The Freudian psychology, uh, Dr. Sigmund Freud, you all know, you know he's the father of uh, psychoanalysts uh, in today's society. Okay, he basically talks about the fact that, hey, we each, all humans, have a need to seek comfort and avoid suffering. Okay, and, uh, and that's very basic, yeah. When you put your hand on a fire, it hurts, and you're gonna pull it back. So therefore, you will try to avoid things that are harmful to you physically and mentally, emotionally, that is, and seek things that are conducive to your idea of comfort. <clears throat> so, now, the problem, and it's, and it's our human nature that's like that. It's human nature, okay? Almost a hundred percent of people will be like that. Almost a hundred percent. Maybe there may be a few. Okay. So, how then do you get people to do things? Okay. You hear about the carrot and the stick, right? You you lead you lead a horse with a carrot in front of him. Okay. And what will the horse do? He'll follow. <laughs> he'll try to he'll try to eat that carrot or an apple. Doesn't matter. Okay. And the idea of the stick is that yeah. You over, if you don't do what you're supposed to do, you get punished, you get hit with a stick. Okay, that's the idea behind the carrot and the stick. So, number one, even animals and us, we try to seek something that's good, okay, uh, something that's comforting. For the horse, yeah, eating a carrot is very nice, okay. Getting hit is not very nice, same as us. So therefore, the idea of a reward comes in, into play. Okay, the idea, the concept of, hey, if you, do or go where I want you to go to the horse that is there's a reward in front of you in front so so that is really only a trigger okay in truth is yes 
because we are, even some of us who receive this blessing on that doesn't know much about you know the principles of the Tao or anything like that but our nature still says hey you know I want to seek what that which is comforting versus and avoid that which is bad okay so all of us, let's face it, uh, some are, of us are different ages and all that stuff. Uh, like I'm 60 years old right now, for example. Yeah, so I'm technically ha am a senior citizen. So I know one day, yeah, hey, I'm not going to be able to live like for 200 years. <laughs> I know that for a fact. Okay, that, that's a fact. Okay, but the idea is the fact for those of us who does contemplate the, af the, af the, the later on, <laughs> okay, then, of course, the idea of what? Not having to, what? Recycle or transcend the cycle of life and death seems appealing. Okay, now, of course, that all, all only comes about the fact that if you do believe in this reincarnation stuff, if you don't believe in it, you say, oh, okay, it's over, it's over. That's it, you know. But if you do have an inkling of, yes, there is transmigration, we call it. Transcending the cycle of life and death is called transmigration. In fact, then, we then say, okay, well, in this life, you know, I had some hardships or I had some good times, whatever. Okay, well, if I'm going to trans-migrate, what will happen the next time? You know, because today, let's face it, you look on the news, whatever, you see people who are <laughs> very wealthy. You know, I don't know if you've seen programs like the rich, the, you know, the rich, the world richest people or whatever. Or you, talk, you look in the news and you see people who are very what? bad off, people who were in famine, people, you know, like news, you know, people in Sudan, et cetera, at that time during the famine. Okay, so therefore, you then begin to create concepts or, you know, like ideas about, wow, gee, you know, if there is truly transmigration, why is it that these people are like that and other people are rich? I mean, you will probably want to say, hey, if there was transmigration, I would want to be what, born wealthy, right? Why? <laughs> Again, that's part of our human nature. Okay, you don't want it to suffering. Okay, so, it is, in a way, a carrot and a stick. A carrot, let's put it that way. And actually, uh, uh, Kerry had read also something about what? Disasters and calamities, right? Suffering. That's the stick part, okay? Because let's face it, you know, today in this world, we have, like, for example, I was living in California. One of the biggest concerns we have is earthquake. <laughs> okay, so, and because the big one's supposed to come and hasn't come yet. It's like 30 years due, overdue or something like that. Okay, and the big one, like, the big one, big, big. <laughs> okay, it will probably, you know, do a lot of damage. But the important thing is this, and we want to avoid that. Okay, so the whole idea is, is that it is a form of a carrot and a stick to get you started to go in a certain direction okay now buddha talks about the fact that hey you know he says this what you are now you know to his disciples that is people listening what you are now is because what you have created in the past or what you have done in the past what you want to become in the future will be based on what you do today so in other ways wow if i hear that i go wow you know i'm poor right now so yeah maybe i did something bad in the past to cause this. Well, I don't want to stay poor, so therefore I must be do, I must do good so that, whatever. So it is a carrot and a stick. But that's why I mentioned earlier, I said something what? A little bit deeper understanding of what is the cycle of life and death. And I didn't want to get into that now, but because the time, I'm already using more than, you know, more time than I need for just first question. But yeah, so yeah, Andrew, yeah, come again. And I'll talk to you about that. We can talk about that. <laughs> I won't be kidding. It will come right away. It's to leave uh, to go to the West Coast. Oh, okay. where, where? In California or what? Uh, I, I live in California. I'm going to Seattle. Oh, you're going to Seattle. Okay. Where in California? Uh, LA. Yeah, I'm in the LA area too. Yeah, I, was, I was there for like 20 years. Oh, okay. I was there about nine years. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. But anyway, yeah, I was in Chino. Um, Chino County, it's, 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 it's uh, east of LA yeah. proper, but okay. So anyway, the point is, yeah, okay, uh, yeah, no problem. Uh, in L, if you're, oh, you're going to Seattle, eventually, okay, for work and all that stuff probably, right? No, or school? Yeah. No, no, no school. No. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, for vacation then. Wow, how nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, don't worry about it. Okay, yeah, so, yeah, if you, yeah, hopefully in the future you get more chances to Listen to our classes. Okay, you probably sometimes can even log in. Is that correct, Ty? Well, I mean, it's just online. Yeah, it's online. Yeah, get get our website and you can look 
look at many things. Okay, so anyway, so um, regardless, yeah, yeah, because I really want to get into a little bit more detail about life trans uh, the transcending the cycle of life and death. Okay, because it has a lot of meaning and it it, it, it could take some time. Okay, so anyway, um, I hope I've answered your question, or have I not? Okay, it, yeah, it's in other words, it's to help us. To, it's just to trigger us to start. Okay, but eventually. Once we become better, what, cultivated and have a better understanding of what Tian Dao is, then yes, you're absolutely right in the sense that we do need to, what, let go of this carrot or reward aspect of what we do it because it is what, what you do, you should do, because you yourself have this Buddha nature. <laughs> Okay. The Buddha does what he did what he did to teach others because he saw the equanimity in everyone. And so therefore he realized, hey, if I can become awakened and be enlightened, why can't I help you to do it? Not because of the fact that, oh, you know, I will become a bigger Buddha. Well, you're already a Buddha. <laughs> I don't know if there's a higher level of Buddha, you know, Buddha, super Buddha. I don't know. No, he did it because he realized the fact that, yes, he has this compassion, this thing that's the right thing to do. To help others okay so uh, that basically finishes the first question of why should one with a kind heart still receive the ten thou and Andrew I hope in the future you will be able to receive the ten thou okay or you, you know future meaning after this minute after I said <laughs> okay <laughs> okay yeah that's still future that's still future you know it's not now okay so anyway um, is there any other questions on this topic and Carrie, I know, she, you know, because she didn't get a drink and all that, so, so she's kind of thirsty, so she, she doesn't want to read it anymore. So would anybody else would like to read the second part? The second question, number 38. Yeah, just read the first paragraph, that's all. What is the first thing to do for those who receive Kendall and who and wants to advance. If someone would like to advance after a receipt turned out, the first thing to do is to establish and threaten his faith. His faith. Faith is the foundation of practicing Tao. Faith is the fountain head of building one's merits. Even fortune telling would not fulfill those who do not have faith. Therefore, one cannot overestimate how important faith is in practicing Tao. Yeah, so here he mentions about faith. The question being, is, what's the first thing one should do who does or who is willing then to receive the Tao and then after receiving the Tao want to learn more about it or want to improve, okay? So therefore, the first paragraph talks about faith, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, we've all heard the term faith before. Okay, faith means, okay, yeah, I believe in something maybe you want to call it put it simply or I have a conviction in something okay so now you you may all have heard the term in the Western church what faith can what sometimes in Christian uh, religion they talk this about faith can what move mountains right what does that mean really I mean just by faith I can move it you know, like some you know <laughs> you know, you know uh, even a mutant can't do that, I don't think. Well, Megalotron can, uh, he can move metal things, but he can't move mountains. Oh, no, no, Phoenix, Phoenix. Yeah, Dark Phoenix can move mountains because she's telekinetic. <laughs> okay, but anyway, that aside, joking aside. Okay, <laughs> joking aside. Okay, faith can move mountains. Now, what does that actually mean? Has anybody really delved deeply in that? What does it mean, faith can move mountains? You truly believe that this is going to happen, that you will reach your goal, and you put all your efforts, your time, energy, wisdom, methods, and that's going to lead to the result. Okay, yes. <laughs> yes, in, 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 in the um, broad sense, that is correct. Once you have faith in something, right? First, the next thing you're going to ask is, well, how do I achieve that something? So if faith can move, let's say, you know, like in the case of faith can move mountains, a farmer needs to bring his stuff to the market, and that mountain's in the way. 
it makes his journey much more arduous, you know, much more difficult, et cetera, and long, right? It would be nice if he had a super highway running through it, <laughs> or a tunnel, or a tunnel, right? If he can't do a super highway, he does a tunnel. So therefore, then how do you achieve that goal of getting a tunnel? Because a tunnel is one of the solutions for you, for him, in the sense that he can bring his goods to market. So he would start digging. That's one way. Or he could get, try to get some investors to come in and dig the tunnel for it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, you get some capital investment or whatever. The point is that you then begin or, or become willing to what? Do something. Action. That's where action It isn't just mental, you know, projection <laughs> trying to move a mountain to create a tunnel. You basically perform action. And that action may be minimal. You know, like you just do it yourself or you can get people to do it for you. So even if you can, even if you do do it for yourself, if you still maintain this faith, now you know for a fact that you can't dig the tunnel yourself, okay? But the, the faith that you have is in the goal of eventually getting a tunnel through. So what do you do? You tell your sons or your daughters or your family about it that this is your aspiration. And if you truly are a model father or parent for that family, they will follow through on your aspiration and they will continue to do what you had done but unable to finish. So eventually your aspiration becomes true in the sense that yeah, that tunnel does get cleared eventually. It may take, I don't know, generations, many generations. But what, your faith, what? has come true because you're willing to do it. So therefore, faith really just comes down to the fact that if you truly are willing to commit yourself to do something. Okay, so now here he talks about what? The faith, establishment of the faith in this Tian Tao. Because it is true. When you first receive it, even though you may have a good affinity with the Buddhas and have some interest in it, you're still learning about it. And so therefore, you want to know more. But at the same time, if you want to know more, then what do you got to do? You got to go to class. <laughs> you got to go study, right? So therefore, it isn't just mental aspiration. It is what? The ability to carry it out that truly what defines you as a person who has true faith. So yes, Kevin. Sorry, uh, yes. To share. Okay. So we bought this house in Neal, or Neal, nowhere in Nassau County, just like 12 years ago. Uh, there's no Chinese market here. Okay? This is like, I was hoping that the Chinese market would be there. go there, but there's no reason. There's most population there is Caucasian. Asian is like um, less than 80%. Um, last year, a Chinese market opened in Neal. <laughs> Okay, that's not the end of the story. That was just amazing. Okay, this Chinese market there. Now, they're carrying vegetarian product in that market. So, if you come to town for like, what, four or five years, all these things is happening because we believe that it's helping. You know, we just have some faith. Things will turn around toward a benefit. If you do a lot of good stuff, go turn around. You don't have to ask, you just come. Back. Yes, very interesting. Yeah. Let me give you something that's a little bit more even, like, a little bit more to it, okay. In California, like I said, in Chino, uh, nearby there's several towns, okay, and, and this is back in, I don't know, about 20 years ago, maybe, 20 to 50, 25 years ago. It's in the 1980s, so yeah, about almost, about 30 years, let's say roughly 30 years, okay. and. Uh, near this t uh, our town, uh, a couple towns away probably, uh, there's a town called Temple City. Okay, Temple City. Now that city did not come about 30 years ago. There was no city <laughs> called Temple City over there. Okay, so what happened is, is that, and most of the, uh, that area, because California is big, okay, so there's a lot of open land, okay, even near the cities, okay. And so therefore, that part of this, what is currently now Temple City, has a lot of uh, like, um, we call vacant lots, okay, just call, we just call it vacant lots for now. It's just grass, tall, wild grass is growing all over the place, okay. And so, um, a group of Tao Kin from Taiwan 
uh, uh, I mean, excuse me, in, in living in Los Angeles, you know, wanted to set up a temple. Okay, so they ask uh, our predecessor, our you know, you know, Lao Chenlin, he's the grand predecessor, to come and say, you know, help us. You know, we have some lake and lots that we have selected, you know, and you know, we would like you to you know give the, your opinion on it, so to speak. You know, whether it's good or bad. You know, because we like to respect the elders and their opinion and their advice, right? So he came from Taiwan. He's at that time was already eighty something years old, I believe. No, no, no. Excuse me. He was, uh, yeah, because this temple city was about, I think about 25 years. No, he came, he came when he was like about 60, 70. I don't remember. Okay. So anyway, he came and then they were showing him all the different places. And then they happened to, you know, and this, this, this role. Okay. Um, I, I don't know what the name was, was it of that, at that time. But anyway, there's this role. They were traveling past these, all these vacant lots. And then they said, oh, you know, they were just showing him the scenery and all that. And then he, they, they happen to stop for rest or whatever. And then they, they say, okay, you know, nearby there's some vacant lots that they can look at. And so, remember, all the, those, those lots like at wild grasses, like growing up to your knees and your, your hips. And then so he came out, he looked around, and then he says, you know, this is a good place. And all those Dao King are like scratching their heads. They go, this is in the middle of nowhere. I mean, he, he, he picked a lot that was relatively empty, not, not, completely empty in the sense that, you know, there are other va lots of vacant lots around him, but there's also some, maybe some uh, business, small business buildings. But anyway, he picked the line and everybody said, you sure? You sure? <laughs> because like, it was literally in the middle of nowhere. And people thought, you know, when you set up a temple on that, you want to set it in a place that's have people. <laughs> so people can come, easy to come, you know. But he says, no, no, this is a good place. Okay, so they build this, <laughs> they build the temple over there. They bought the lot and they build it. Okay, now that was about like, like I said, many years ago, okay, and then what happened was this, once they had set up that temple, it was pretty much the only temple on that segment of street. Today, the places, the city, the, 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 the district is now called Temple City because there are now many, many, not only different temples, but also churches or whatever on that street. Okay, and, and they call it temple cities because that city, if you will, has so many temples over there. So many, whatever. Now, this is before any of them came. Uh, you know, the before, uh, whatchamacallit, they, I mean, all that occurred after they had set up that temple. Okay, now, how, why, how does that relate to what Edison's talking about? In a way, when you are willing to set up a temple, now Edison happens to have a home temple. He set up a home temple when he bought one. Did you? Or oh, no, not yet, that time. Oh, you do, you do, you do, okay, you do, right. So once you do have set up a temple, okay, I guess the only, the easiest way to explain it is that, you know, you've heard of the Chinese concept called qi, you know, qi gong, you know, qi kung fu, okay. The chi of the area, if you will, so like, I don't know, in my, this is my own interpretation, I may be wrong, so you may need to probably ask a true geomancy expert, or you know, geomancy is what we call feng shui, <laughs> okay, or a, a Buddha, <laughs> ask a Buddha, <laughs> okay, that it changed the chi of the place. And so therefore, people sometimes when they, normal people, sometimes when they encounter something, because sometimes you say, oh, so you hear some people say, oh, they say, oh, this is an auspicious place. How do you know that? <laughs> it's just because they felt the chi of it, if you will, for, for, for lack of explanation. Okay, so therefore, it changed the chi of the place and makes it desirable, I guess we're gonna call that desirable. And so therefore, people want to come. Okay, and so that's why that street now has so many jobs. Probably because they said, oh, you know, hey, you build temple, I can build a better temple, you know? <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. Maybe it's competition or not, I don't know. But the point is that there are so many temples of different groups and even churches where along that street now. Okay, so it's very interesting. So yeah, if you do have, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, when we go out to what we call Pioneer the Dao in different places, like when we went to California, was trying to do that, yeah. You know, sometimes we transmitters say, ah, this place is no good, you know, it's run down, et cetera, whatever, or there's, you know, the neighborhood is not good and all that stuff. In reality, you know, if you truly have this faith in your town, 
it doesn't really matter <laughs> where you are. You could, you know, for, for all I know, you could build your temple on an earthquake fault in California, <laughs> for all I know. The point is that if you truly have this faith and you can do it, believe it or not, things will change. It will change. It will take time. Yes, all things, things take time, but it will change. So that's why faith is so strong. That's why faith is very strong. So that's why, you know, the first thing that when you do talk about the Tian Tao or this Tao, it is true for us to establish faith. Because let's face it, when I received Tao and all, you know, Tao, eh, I was only a little kid, five or six years old, I couldn't care. But for those who are new to this, okay, many of you are new here. When you have to receive the Tao, you weren't told really about, oh, you should establish your faith and all this stuff. Probably not, right? But the idea is that, yes, if you do have already, already an interest in the Tao, yeah, the first thing you should try to do is try to establish your faith to get, make sure that you are fully understand. And you know, to do that, you definitely ask a lot of questions. Now, if they can answer your questions, great. Chances are they won't be able to answer your questions. Okay, but the point is that it, does, it shouldn't prevent you from continuing to answering, uh, asking and learning so that you yourself can answer your, those questions. Okay, so it's, that's why it's important to learn about what your faith is about. <laughs> Okay, and it sort of like, in a way, builds up your faith as well. Okay, so now, uh, right now the time uh, is for break, so we'll do a quick break, and then uh, after that we have another class, and then the second class is, second class is Ty? Who's, who's doing the class? Oh, Kai, okay. Kai, there will be a different class because we do have two classes. So anyway, I'm sorry that I did not really go too much, answer too many questions. We are only starting the second one, and maybe uh, I have spent too much time on these first two, but I felt that it was very important that we truly understand when we read this, okay? I, because it is, like I said, there are some, I felt that some mistranslations, okay, or vague translations that sort of like can give you different ideas or false ideas. Okay, so um, I hope that in the future we can continue, you know, these classes on the, the answers to truth, okay. And uh, so I wish again to thank the grace of heaven and the uh, virtue of our predecessors and the compassion of our transmitters that I have this opportunity to present this class on the answers to truth. And uh, if there's anything that I haven't said that is not satisfactory or incorrectly, I hope the saints will forgive me. Thank you very much.